All right, bro. Let's go ahead and get into it, big dog. I know it's. I haven't talked about this team in a little bit because I really haven't been posting it, man. And I found this is the time to do it because this is this is basically almost everybody's last game of the season, and I just want to talk about the Lakers, of course, because you know that's one of my favorite. Well, that's my favorite team in the NBA. Um, you know, I just find this is the perfect time to talk about them because. They are in a, a good spot as of this moment. Now, the reason why I say they in a good spot is because they went from, okay, potentially the 60. Well, AD got hurt. LeBron got sick. Okay, that's, that sucks. Now, since the Warriors had lost to the Pelicans and since the Kings had lost to the Suns, now they're in a good spot to only be in position to play one playing game now. Now, it's going to determine like how everything shakes out to, uh, today, actually, because today is a big day for the Lakers because they got to face the Pelicans. I think they face them at New Orleans, I believe. I could be wrong with that. Yeah, they definitely do face them at New Orleans. And um, uh, I think they were 2-1 and one against the Pelicans. Now, I could be wrong on that front because I know they beat them. They blew them out one time. The Pelicans did. Uh, the Lakers met them in the end season tournament, so that's one. And they faced the L.A. again, so that's 2-1, okay? So, yeah, it's 2-1 currently against the Pelicans. And um, i tell you what, with Brandon Ingram coming back, CJ McCollum is finding a new rhythm, averaging like 30 over his last six games or something like that. Um, Zion Williamson, he looked more, way more active on defense. You can tell he shed some pounds because now he'll be more active on defense and he'll give him the uh, – the Pelicans are more scoring punch. Now you see a more serious team why they getting high at the right time. Now, the the way the Lakers uh, beat them in L.A. is, is because of D'Angelo Russell going off. Now, the reason why I bring up D'Angelo Russell at this moment is because the last four games he has been pathetic from D'Angelo Russell. Now, this is not going to take away from the high stretch he had post or during the trade deadline, or when the trade deadline was going on. Not to, not to take away from that, but it's, like, very, like, very, very concerning. He's uh, putting up the worst performances of the season when the playoffs come up. Mind you, last year in the playoffs, he was doing this all the the Conference Finals. All the the Conference Finals. Mind you, doing this hot streak, oh, we should trade Daniel Russell. He should be re-signed and all that. I'm like, pump the brakes on that. We have to actually see what he does the rest of this season, which is really only one game up for the Lakers. And um, the previous, like I said, four has been, like, pathetic. If he to continue to do this in the playoffs, there is no telling what team could offer him. Now, he got a playoff so he can pick that up because uh, if he wants to bet this playoffs, yeah, this – this should be his last season in L.A. bro, because you cannot continue to do that and just face no repercussions behind that, bro. That, no, that cannot happen. And the thing is, D'Angelo Russell, when he's on, he's on. That because his defense is one of the worst in the league, probably the worst in the league. He literally just phones everything to AD. He'll make it tough on the defender. He'll try uh bump with the uh opposing ball him. He'll do none of that. He just, just let them go by. I saw in that Warriors game when they uh faced the bench unit, when he was on the court with the bench unit, CP3 literally blew right past them. CP3. 2024 CP3 blew right past them. And mind you, that's a guard that doesn't blow by anybody no more. And he blew right past the end of Russell. And I'm like, dude, this cannot, we can't win games like this. You already not giving us nothing on offense. Can you at least give us something on defense? Now, he claimed he wanted to be some uh, resemblance of Darren White and Will Head and, you know, turned his back on that deal when he said, oh, I, defense is not my thing and stuff like that. So I just want the end of Russell to be the best he can be. Also, Austin Reed to be the best he can be because. Listen, if the backcourt is just going to give us pathetic performances, you know, and mind you, folks was complaining all season that the starting back or the best players on the team or a.k.a. the highest paid players on the team was not starting together. So um, we here we are, and 
I tell you what, Rui Hachimura is like he's been outstanding. Austin Reeves, I don't know what's going on. Uh, he he give you a great performance, then he give you a poor performance right after that. D'Angelo Russell, like I just mentioned, has been pulling pathetic performances as of late. And uh, I'm very, um, I'm not gonna lie, I'm, I'm very concerned. Um, and um, I, I I just. I just I don't know I just don't trust this team if they have to play two playing games, bro. Because once you <laughs> anything can happen, bro. Anything. And um, yeah, that's really all I want to talk about from the first segment of this video. So let's talk about the second segment while I'm making this video. So you know this stretch from this I would say December, mid December to like January. That was when the Lakers was at is poorest. Uh, output, right? Now, folks all blame the uh, Darvin Hill for the way the season went. And mind, they put it all on Darvin Hill and not D'Angelo Russell sticking up, not Austin uh, Reeves having fatigue and coming up with illness and stuff like that. No, but like, bro, Vando was hurt. Vando been still is still hurt to this day. Rui Hachimura, he was in and out the lineup with injuries and stuff like that. Folks only blame Darvin Ham for this, but in reality, the roster was just not healthy outside of Brian AD, and that is crazy to say in 2024, since this is the most game they played since 2020. 2020, bro. So, yeah, I, I just I just, I just, can't agree with that. Now, has Darvin Ham lived up to expectations this year? No, he did not live up to expectations this year, because... For for starters, the offense clearly was not the same from last year. You saw last year it had way more structure. You saw they had a couple pet uh, plays they went to, bro. Now I tell you what, in the clutch at the beginning of this year, they did have pet plays. I'm not going front, but throughout the game, you can tell the offense was clearly didn't have the same vibe or like you know flow. It had last year. And that was one of the big reasons why D'Angelo Russell said what he said in the article that the offense was like, we need to run better stuff. Because it wasn't running better stuff in the beginning of this year. Post, like, uh, December, January, that's when they started running their best stuff. And that's why the offense was one of the best in the league now. They literally are six and three point percentage. So, so that's to tell you all you need to know about how the Lakers offense has been throughout the season. Well, throughout the second half of the season, that's all they needed was a, a juice in the in offensive play calling. Now, I'm not gonna front to you though. Uh, Darvin Ham rotations it's been kind of questionable, but hear me out. Hear me out. Like I said, Rudy Hachimura, he's been hurt. Man, though, he's been hurt. Christian Wood, Jackson Hayes, both has been kind of inconsistent. Um, it, it's very unfortunate that Christian Wood was playing his best ball as a Laker, and he gets hurt. And he hasn't been back since. So, um, the Gabe Vincent, he just came back. Now, Gabe Vincent, he's still trying to find a three-point shot. Um, it's very unfortunate that he didn't get the the uh, month to actually overcome those struggles, like a uh, Tory Prince had to overcome the struggles. Uh, who else? I said D'Angelo Russell had to overcome it. Austin, like right, it was a bunch of players on this team that was going through the three point shooting bug. But after you know they started to get their legs up under them, and to, you know getting ready for a new season, we saw their three point percentage start to spike. So yeah, Gabe Vincent he didn't get to uh, go through that, but his defense been outstanding though. And that's really all you can say, but. Having a mini Vando out there, and I just, uh, I don't know, man. It's crazy. But, yeah, that's what I have to say. This season has not been lost because of all of Darvin Ham. No. It's been because of injuries. It's been because of inconsistent play. It's been because of offensive play call. Now, I'm not going to let him off the hook, but the offensive play call was bad. The rotations, I can't really too much blame him on that because, yeah, he did play Cam Reyes and Torian Prince a lot compared to other guys. But the defense was just not good. Now, he tried to lean more into defense because they, he felt like the offense was just fine. But that line just, just didn't have cohesion at all. And that's why he had to pivot towards Rui Hachimura in January or February, I believe. So, yeah, that's really all I got for today's video. Hopefully, you guys like, comment, subscribe. This is your boy, Trail. I'm out.